Hey, so before we get into this video, I wanted to mention we're offering our super early bird discount again for our 2022 mentorship. That's going on now until the end of September. You get to save 1100 bucks. And if uh, you miss out on that for some reason, we always offer our early bird discount from October 1st till the end of December. So check that out on our website, wtfmushrooms.com. And if for some reason you guys can't get here because of COVID, travel restrictions and all that, we are offering our book and I'll leave a link up there. You can save a hundred bucks right now if you click on that link from this video. Let's talk about when it starts raining. We haven't had rain for a couple months out here and actually it's been such a horrible year for forest fires. If you guys haven't been following the news, we're actually surrounded by forest fires here in the Okanagan and I do have some restaurant clients that have been affected. So we actually are really excited to get some rain today. But with that, there's a couple things that we need to do. So with our greenhouses, you can hear the fans, they're not on. And that's because it's very humid outside right now. So what's gonna happen is, is the air in the greenhouses can get stagnant and dirty, filled with spores, and we're not getting that clean air cycling through. And that's when you start seeing maybe problems with blotch or even uh, problems with uh, mutations, especially with our L moisture as the temperatures drop and you get colder temperatures and maybe water staying on the mushrooms a little bit longer than they normally do we'll often see mushrooms growing on mushrooms. And this is, uh, this is sometimes referred to as rose comb, but this is a problem specifically that we'll see with some of our warm weather strains if the temperature dips. So to mitigate that, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna lift up the sides on this, this side of the greenhouse. The sun comes over the mountain here in the morning and then it's gonna be the strongest as it sets at night so we want to leave the side over there on the right closed but i'm going to lift up this side of the greenhouse on each greenhouse and that's going to bring in some fresh air so what we've done is we have a bug netting screen like that so that mosquitoes and and fungus gnats and all that can't get in the greenhouses and we have magnets that we take to the poly and we've taped to the side and this is just going to stick up here and it's really slick and that's a great way to get some fresh air in so we're just gonna go do that right now Just like that. So I'm gonna get this done and then I'm gonna bring you guys in the greenhouses and just take you along today on harvesting and maybe point out what's going on and get everything boxed up and then I'm gonna get this order out to the chefs today.
So let's bring you guys into Greenhouse 3 right now. This is all second, third flush alum oyster. Got lots growing in here right now. A little bit of pink oyster. So we'll probably get about 50 pounds today. Let's bring you guys in Greenhouse 4 next. Just finishing second flush in this greenhouse right now. So we'll probably get maybe four pounds or so in there. Greenhouse five. Uh, we're going to be cleaning this greenhouse uh, next week. We're just finishing off our flushes in here. A uh, little strategy we did was we actually put about 60 blocks of elm oyster in here just to get a quick flush. So we have a bunch of those. These are all first flush elm. And then, as you guys can see, there's not much else going on in this one. Just coming to the end of the life of this greenhouse right now. These are tree oysters finishing their second flush. There. Uh, a little bit of chestnut. Right the greenhouse that is really pumping for us right now is greenhouse seven. This is all first flush. We've been harvesting maybe four days out of here. Lots of elm oyster. Elm oyster is what we focus on for the summer. This is our go-to strain. These are all just beautiful though. So with the oysters we're going to be harvesting just as the cap starts to flatten. So this is perfect here. You can see this one is uh, quite flat, still you know great quality, but that's a little bit late from what we're looking for. And I can bring you guys finally into greenhouse one. Just starting to rain right now. Uh, on an awful day today. This is our old design. We still have the old uh, zipper garage style greenhouse. So we might be able to find some examples of rose comb in here and I'll talk to you guys a little why and let's see if we can find it. So that's that's rose comb right there. Got a little bit of Mushroom growing on the mushroom. I don't know. If there's gonna be any other examples here? Oh, there's one over here. So I'll just pick it. I'll show you guys. So you can see just little bits of mushrooms growing on the mushroom, and that's just from growing in uh, conditions that are not perfect. Uh, so the fan in this case is not running as often and that really has nothing to do with the weather. Well it does because it's been very smoky because of the forest fires. But with this greenhouse specifically, <laughs> uh, when the sun is just coming over the mountain, this building shades this greenhouse from the sun and it doesn't, the fan doesn't get tripped as often because the building is is creating an environment where the humidity is not dropping in the greenhouse as fast. So what that means is, is if 
if it's cloudy or, or rainy like this, or in our case this year, the forest fires that's been blocking out the sun, this greenhouse, you're not getting the same evaporation as you're going to be getting in these because they're more exposed. So the fan doesn't actually trip as much. And we were having a lot of problems with this greenhouse earlier last week. And the solution was, is we dropped down the shade cloth from the side. We have two shade cloths that go over this greenhouse. And we actually just reduced that to one. I got the other one right there. And for the flow meter, we normally run our greenhouses at six. We reduce that to two so that it's going to actually cause the fan to run longer because it needs, uh, it's, it's producing uh, less water from the fan. So then we need to get more water out of the fan to, to actually maintain around 85% humidity. So we're causing the fan to, to circulate the air more often than what typically happens in our other greenhouses. And that's getting more fresh air in this, in this grow room, which is creating the quality of mushrooms that we're looking for. And if, if you don't have that, that proper air circulation, that's when you're gonna get problems with bacteria. In this case, with this mushroom specifically, you get rose comb. So you can see we're just coming to the end of the problem that we had, and we're just getting a little bit of these mutations because we've corrected the problem. But if it's already started, like this one, it's going to continue to grow and mature with that mushroom. And obviously it's completely edible, it's just not the product we're looking for. So I would say if, if I would say if you're looking to, to understand what forest fire conditions can do to a greenhouse environment like this, that is <clears throat> that is probably uh, the only thing we're seeing. You're gonna maybe get less airflow, and that airflow can raise CO2 levels, or it could create uh, the fans, or it could cause the fans not to run as often. And the most problem we're having is only really with this greenhouse, and that's because we're already getting a lot of shade from this building. If your greenhouses are kind of exposed like this and they don't have any extra shade like any tree cover or anything like that i don't actually see a problem with with forest fires being uh being a main issue but when it's raining like this we're we're in constant uh <coughs> constant battle with with blotch especially with uh, strains like our blue oyster and and we've solved that solution with this new greenhouse design by lifting up the side we create more airflow it's just it's tricky because if if the sun is out and and it's hot like above 30 we're getting too much airflow in the greenhouses and that's causing the humidity levels to drop rapidly and then our fans can't keep up so you know if this was automated obviously this that would be sweet but we're just a small uh, artisan farm so obviously we're going to just do it this way and this works well for us and it's just up to me to make sure that that I'm monitoring what's going on in the greenhouses. So if we're harvesting and we're seeing dried mushrooms, then that's a good indication that we got to get some more shade cloth coverage or we got to close up the, the big gaps like this to, to reduce fresh air coming in. These windows are a little bit bigger on these new designs too. And this, this is a great passive air intake. So we got air coming in and exiting out the back. And then we also cut these little holes out the side and if you guys watch my videos you know all about this this four by four windows and we have i believe 10 on each side so 10 there and 10 over here let's bring you guys in the greenhouse and let's do some harvesting and get everything boxed up So what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest everything really quick. I'm going to pile it up, 
and then I go back and I trim everything, trim off the base, and then keep moving to the greenhouse one by one. And then I'm gonna bring my baskets in here, fill out five pound baskets, get them all weighed, put a lid on, labeled, and then out to the chef. So I wanted to point out one thing. This is the last greenhouse I'm gonna be harvesting. These are reishi blocks. If you guys watched my last video, I'll leave a link up at the top. These we harvested, cleaned this greenhouse and shut it down. And now we have oysters growing all throughout here. But we did save a hundred of these as more of an experiment. We're doing a second flush. Reishi takes about uh, six to eight weeks to grow. And we're not sure if uh, we can get a second flush out of these or not because uh, the blocks might have lost too much water. But we're flipping them upside down like we do with all our top fruiting strains like King Oyster Chestnut and we're trying to initiate fruiting from the bottom on the top. So we lift up the bag, make an air pocket and hopefully these will get a second flush. And they may or may not, but we have another six weeks of warm weather. So we'll see. But it is promising that you guys you can probably see there is uh, like these marshmallow shapes starting on this block here. So I think they're probably starting. I wanted to mention we dried 124 pounds fresh of reishi and we packaged these, these packs up of 0.7 pounds. We got about 27% dry weight by the time we dried it. And if, if anyone's ever looking to support us on our YouTube channel, I'm gonna give you an opportunity right now. We have about 20 of these packs available. I'll leave a link at the top of the screen if you guys would like to purchase one of these. Uh, I'm gonna offer our wholesale rate for these, even if you just wanna buy one. And, and really it's just because I'm really grateful for all the support that I've had from you on my YouTube channel. I wanna pass it on and, and give you guys a really good deal. Reishi mushrooms are really great for your health. You're just gonna to wanna to maybe make a tea out of these. You can powder them if you want to. But the best way to do it, just make a nice tea, two hours steep. And this is a great way to boost your immune system and really just give you a, a great start to your day. So this is a lot of reishi. You really don't need much. Uh, I would say if you're, if you're gonna use this once a week or so, this is probably gonna last you a few months. So anyways guys, link uh, in the description below as well. If you guys wanna buy one of these packs, be truly grateful if you wanna support us. All right, I'm gonna get back to harvesting all these elm oysters. Uh-huh. 
Hope you enjoyed that video. That's a little bit of what's involved for harvesting. Can you even believe it's on a Sunday and I'm harvesting right now? With mushrooms, the work doesn't stop. So I have about 65 pounds of mushrooms that's going out to three chefs today. And then we're looking to start collecting for midweek and start fulfilling orders after that. Again, I want to remind you guys, if you're thinking about taking our mentorship program for 2022, we offer a super early bird discount. That's going on from now until the end of September. You get to save 1100 bucks. If you're late to this video, we also offer an early bird discount. That's going on from October until the end of December for our 2022 mentorship. All right, we'll catch you in the next one. Mm-hmm.